Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for Math 085. This is section 1.11. Uh, we're going to multiply and divide integers. In the previous section, we added and subtracted. And now we're going to multiply and divide. Keep in mind that the rules that we introduce for addition and subtraction are different than those for multiplication and division. You have to keep them separate because multiplication and division are a different operation. So let's look at some multiplication that we should be somewhat familiar with. 3 times 4, well, we know that that's 12. And 2 times 4 is 8. And 1 times 4 is 4. And 0 times 4 is, oh, excuse me, 0. Negative 1 times 4, well, now we introduce negatives. So this might be a little bit new. I have a negative 1 times 4. Well, let's think of it. If I owe $1 to four different people, how much do I owe altogether? Negative 1 times 4. I would owe it 4 times. Negative 4. Negative 2 times 4, well, <clears throat> maybe I owe two people each $4. Negative 2 and 4 would be negative 8. Negative 3 times 4. So hopefully we see the pattern here. Negative 3 times 4 is a negative 12. Maybe I owe three people $4 each. So we can see how. When we introduce a negative, it produces a negative answer. Let's look over here, where now we're going to multiply it a little bit differently. This value is going to be negative. 3 times a negative 4. Well, if we use the same concept we just had there, 3 times negative 4, well, if I owe 3, or if I, there are, hmm, if there are 3 people that I owe $4 to, I would owe $12. 2 times a negative 4, negative 8. 1 times a negative 4, negative 4. 0 times a negative 4, well, hopefully we remember 0 times anything is 0, right? Almost of a mistake I made back here. Negative 1 times negative 4. Well, if I'm owed $4 from people here, well, that's a debt coming in. Maybe one way to look at it. Hopefully, it's not confusing. But this says the opposite times the opposite. Well, the opposite of, and of means multiplying, the opposite of a negative is going to be a positive. When we have two negatives, it gives us a positive value. Multiplication of two negatives is positive. So if someone owes me negative $4, we're going to come out 8 ahead. One way to look at it. And this can be confusing, but if we just keep in mind, if we're multiplying two numbers, two negatives gives us a positive, because it's the opposite of negative. The opposite of negative is a positive. 3 times 4 is 12. So let's just kind of roll back for a moment and notice when we had one negative, we got a negative answer. One negative, we got a negative answer. When we had two negatives, we got a positive answer. Or, when we had two positives, we got a positive answer. If the signs are the same, they're both positive or both negative, we're going to get a positive value if the signs are the same. If the signs are different, we're going to get a negative. All right, let's look at what that surmises to be. Over here, it says, the product of two numbers, and that's all we did in those examples, the product of two numbers, if they have the same sign, it will always be positive. If the product of two numbers have opposite signs, it will always be negative. But that's only when we have two numbers. Let's look, use this at, in these examples. If I assess this, I say, hey, these have opposite signs. So I know I can assess it and say it's going to be Negative. And now I can just multiply the numbers. 4 times 7 is 28. So negative 4 times 7 is a negative 28. They have different signs, opposite signs, negative output. Here I look at these. I have negative 5 times negative 6. We remember parentheses uh, adjacent means multiplication. They have the same sign. We're going to get a positive value. 5 times 6 is 30, a positive 30. Just like this, we see, hey, both of these are positive. We can just multiply them together to get a positive value. Same sign. They're both positive. I get a positive. 4 times 11 is 40.
4. But what happens when we have more than two factors? What if we have 3 or more? Well, one thing we could do is we could just take it one piece at a time. Our order of operation says we work left to right. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to look at these two first. They have different signs, so I know this value would be negative. So I can multiply 12 times 9, and I'm going to get some value. Uh, I'm going to get 108. Well, 108 times 0 is 0. Well, is 0 positive or negative? 0 is neither. And 0 times anything is 0. So we really didn't have much to think about if we identified that 0 first. Remember the associative property. I could have multiplied 0 times 9 and then times 12. I can do it in any order. But let's look at this one. Negative 2 times 3. That's a negative 6 because they have different signs. So now I have a negative 6 times 4. Well, that negative 6 and this 4 have different signs. Opposite signs give me a negative. This is going to be a negative 24. Now I could have went the other way. 4 times 3 is 12. Same sign, that'd be positive. But then when I multiply by negative, now I have these two new values. These two new values will give me a negative 24. And then we could say 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. So this is negative 4 times a negative 2. Out of those two numbers, they're both negative. It gives me a positive. So I'm going to get 8. 8 times 5, those two values are the same sign. I'm going to remain positive, and I get 40. Now, <clears throat> you may not go this fast, but you will with time. You might want to break it down. Maybe say, OK, let's do these two first, and then take that value, do these two, and so on. But we'll show you a quicker way so you can get there. If we look at this, negative 2 times 4, well, that's a negative 8 because they have different signs. Negative 8 times a negative 2. Now, that's two negatives. That's the positive, same sign, positive. So negative 8 and negative 2 is a positive 16. Positive 16 times a negative 3, well, now we only have the one negative. We're going to get a negative 48. And now we can say, do we see a pattern here? I had one negative. And I got 0. Well, this one's that misnomer, that special case, because of 0. So let's not look at that. This one here only had one negative. It was negative. This had two negatives. It was positive. This had three negatives. It was negative. When we have more than just two numbers, we can assess the sign right from the start if it's just multiplication. I can say, OK, this has one negative. 1 is an odd number. Odd amount of negatives is going to give me a negative value. An even amount of negatives will give me a positive value. Here's 1. That was negative. Here's 2, an even number. That was positive. Here's 3. 3 was negative. Well, what if I had a negative times a negative times a negative times a negative? If I have four negatives, my answer will be positive because 4 is an even amount of negatives. All right, let's look at this. We're going to simplify and evaluate. We're going to apply exponents to integers now. We've, we've introduced exponents before, and we talked about the exponent only applies to what it's adjacent to. So we have to be careful and watch grouping symbols. 4 squared, well, we know this one. This just says 4 times itself. 4 times 4 is 16. This one here says negative 4 times negative 4. If we wrote it out, it would be negative 4 squared, which means multiply it by itself. Two negatives is going to be a positive. It also gives me 16. But what about this one? Well, this is only adjacent to that 4. What it says is negative 4 squared, which is 4 times 4. Well, I only have one negative here. So it's negative 16. Be careful. Watch those parentheses. If a negative value is not within parentheses, that power does not apply to it. If we look here, this would be negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. Because that negative is in the parentheses, it applies to every factor. Because everything in those parentheses is being raised to the power of 3. Three negatives, 1, 2, 3. That's an odd number. And 2 cubed is 8. And then we can look at this one. That negative is not in the parentheses, so it doesn't go in the parentheses. 2 times 2 times 2. The 3 only applies to what it's adjacent to. So 1 negative tells me negative, because that's odd. 2, 2, 2 is 8. And that's how we evaluate 
exponents with integers. Careful, watch those parentheses. Know what it applies to. Well, now we're going to look at division. And believe it or not, we've already talked about all the rules of division. That same rule of the number of negatives applies to division as well. Multiplication and division are similar operations, so they follow all the same rules. So if I look at this, I'm going to assess and say 80 divided by 8. Well, I know how to do division. We've already learned that before. But now I have to realize that we're dealing with integers, so I'm going to assess the sign. Two positive values is going to give me a positive outcome. 80 divided by 8 is 10. Negative 72 divided by 9. Well, I have division. I'm going to assess how many negatives do I have. Just one. That's an odd number of negatives. My answer is negative. Now I can do the division. 72 divided by 9 is, oh, yeah, that's right. Whoa. <laughs> Now we have this one, negative 49 divided by negative 7. I have two negatives. Two negatives gives me a positive, right? So if this is positive, I've already assessed the answer. Now I can do the division. 49 divided by 7 is 7. Now if we look at this, let's 0 divided by 13. Well, 0 is neither positive or negative, but 0 divided by any number is? 0, which is neither positive or negative. So we don't really have to concern ourselves about sign. Now here I look at it and say, well, I have negative 6 divided by 0. I could take the time to say, hey, I have 1 negative. My answer should be negative. But what do we always have to remember? You can never divide by 0. If I have 6 items and I want to divide it into 0 pieces, it wouldn't exist anymore. You can't make something just disappear. This is undefined. And lastly, we're going to evaluate x divided by y if x is 56. So I have x divided by y. And y is negative 8. This is 56. I replace my x with what x equals and my y with what y equals. And then I can assess it a positive over a negative. I only have one negative here. So my answer is negative. And now I can do the division, 56 divided by 8 is 7. All right, <clears throat> one last application. It says farms in the US dropped from 1 million in 1998 to 600,000 in 2000. Find the average change per year of farms. If we remember a previous video, we talked about averages. And average is just the sum of the numbers over the number of numbers. Well, this is a little bit different because we're looking at an average rate of change. Well, dropped tells us I'm going to decrease, right? 1 million in 1998 decreased to 600,000. That's given information, this here and those two numbers. And we want to find per year. Well, the word per is actually a key. This is given information. This means to divide. Divide by the number of years. And if we see how many years pass from 98 to 2000, well, the, their change is 2. So we can find this difference and divide by 2. All right? Oh, I'm missing a 0 here. My uh, camera person pointed that out. Thank you. So go ahead and find this difference. We worked out the problem. We're going to find the average rate of change of these farms in this year. Sorry about missing that zero. Go ahead and calculate it yourself. Good luck. Thank you.